this is Andrew. Everyone say, hi Andrew. hi, Andrew. Andrew lives in Portland, Oregon. He's 23 and has spastic cerebral palsy. Now, just a few years ago, while Andrew was undergoing drug therapy following surgery for his condition, Andrew lost five members of his family in just one year. And the shock of those losses, combined with the effects of the drug therapy, sent Andrew on a downward spiral. He uh, started having panic attacks. He developed post-traumatic stress disorder. Andrew found it increasingly difficult to be in any kind of a social setting. And as a result, for the past two years, Andrew has almost never left his own home. Yet, Andrew holds down a job as an IT support person, working at home through an internet connection, thanks to a friend he met through social media. For the past year or so, he's been seeing a therapist about once a week through Skype. And just about six months ago, some friends of his on Facebook got together and raised over $5,000 to buy this wheelchair for Andrew. So is social media helping Andrew overcome adversity? Absolutely. Without it, Andrew would not have had the opportunity to find a full-time job at home. He would have found it extremely stressful to get out and attend any kind of therapy. And he certainly would not have the circle of friends and connections that he now has through social media. This is a Len. Everyone say, hi, Len. Hi, Len. Len lives in Ottawa, Ontario. She's 21 years old. And just this past year, Len found out that she has idiopathic pulmonary fibrosis, and she would need a double lung transplant. Uh, she was put on a waiting list, and once there, everything we've ever heard about those waiting lists about how long it takes and about how few of us ever sign up to become organ donors, even though we all think it's a pretty good idea, became reality for Elaine. In her native Ontario alone, about 1,500 people are kept waiting, 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 day after day, knowing that every third day, one of them will die waiting. So Elaine decided to do something about it. She got together with a few of her friends, and soon some other people joined in, and they tried to get the attention of pop star Justin Bieber to ask Justin if he would send out a tweet encouraging all of his followers on Twitter to sign up as organ donors. So they got uh, Justin's attention, and he sent this tweet. I got the word. You have amazing strength. I got you. Be an organ donor. Now, in just the first three days following that tweet, 565 people in Ontario alone signed up to be organ donors. If each one of those organ donors has the potential to save eight lives, that would be about 4,000 people whose lives were potentially saved. Is social media helping Elaine overcome adversity? Sure, absolutely. Uh, she used it to spread the word about organ donors and actually help save the lives of thousands of people, all because of the actions of Elaine and her friends and Justin Bieber in social media. Now this is Sir Dr. Wilfred Grenfell. Everyone say, hi, Sir Dr. Wilfred Grenfell. Hi, Sir Dr. Wilfred Grenfell. Very good. <laughs> Grenfell was a missionary doctor, as many of you may know, who served the people of Labrador and northern Newfoundland back in the late 1800s and early 1900s. Incredibly dedicated doctor. And way back in April 1908, on Easter Sunday morning, Grenfell set out by dog sled uh, from St. Anthony to a community about 200 miles south to try to save the life of a young boy. And on the way, he thought he'd save some time, so he took a shortcut across the bay. Unfortunately, the ice was getting soft because it was April, and it started to break up beneath him. He and his dogs started to be washed out to sea. They were stuck on an ice pan that floated further and further away from shore. Now, the day got worse, and there's an incredible story of bravery and resourcefulness, as Grenfell did everything he could to stay alive that day. But as the day wore on and actually moved into the nighttime and a freezing rain fell, the weather got worse, Grenfell knew that he would have to do something drastic in order to, save a lot, to stay alive. And so he took out his iPhone. <laughs> really? And he sent this tweet. Drifting out to sea, LOL. 
next time, take the bus. <laughs> Not one person saw the tweet because no one else signed onto Twitter for another 95 years. <laughs> but that's okay, that's okay. Because Grenfell had started his own social network. Didn't even realize it, but he had. For years, the people in the area had seen Grenfell doing everything he could to save their lives and save the lives of their families. And they were determined that they would now save his life. They had spotted him floating out from shore that night. And as early as possible the next morning, they set out by boat and they saved the lives of Grenfell and his remaining dogs. So, did social media save Dr. Grenfell's life? No. No. <laughs> Wasn't even invented. However, the actions of Dr. Grenfell are a perfect example of how social media can overcome adversity. Because as much as many of us like to think else, uh, otherwise, technology is not really the focus of social media at all. Social media is about people. It's about having a voice, whoops, sorry, it's about ha having a voice that you would not otherwise have and hearing the voices that would not otherwise be heard. And it has nothing to do with how many connections you have or how many contacts you have or how many networks you're in. It is all about the people that you meet and the friendships that you form and the lifelines you secure. It's about the help that you get and the help that you give. So, sorry, there you go. Okay. The technology behind social media allows us to get out, or sorry, allows us to stay in and meet new people, just like your car allows you to get out and meet new people. But social media should never be focused on technology any more than your family gathering should be focused on your car. It's just simply what gets you there. Social media can help overcome adversity because people help overcome adversity. And social media connects us with those people. Whether it's the customers that we need for our business to grow and prosper, whether it's a support group that we find on Facebook, or whether it's the family and friends that we might not otherwise be able to meet. The people who get the most from social media are those who have learned to focus beyond the pixels to see the people. And the more comfortable we are looking through social media rather than at it, the more we're likely to get something from it. Relationships that we form in social media, just like the friendships we form in the rest of our lives, are most valuable to us when we learn to invest in them before we need to get things from them. Just like uh, when you're drowning would be a terrible time to start taking swimming lessons. <laughs> or uh, if you're thirsty, not a great time to start digging a well. In the same way, with these relationships, you want to learn to invest in them before you need to get something from them. So what do you do with this social media stuff now? One of the comments that I hear most from the most people, whether it's a business looking for help with, for help with a social media strategy, or whether it's a friend of mine who's just wondering what in the world all the fuss about, is about, is how do you get started? They all feel like they uh, want to do something, but they feel like they need to know something else first. They, need to, or they, they, they seem to feel like there's just something else they have to be doing before they can actually get started. So there's all sorts of little bits of advice I'll give each of them, but there's one general bit of advice I give all of them, and it's this. Start. Just start. Start to listen. Start to talk. Start to help. If you're a business, start helping people who have troubles with the kind of things that your business does. And if you're an individual, start to realize that you are closer to more resources, more opportunities to help, more opportunities to be helped, than anyone else in the entire history of this planet before you could ever have imagined. So, there's Andrew. <laughs> He's using social media to reach out to a world that would otherwise be frighteningly difficult for him to find. Helen, she's using social media to help save lives and to inspire others to do the same. Dr. Grenfell, bless his heart, <laughs> he shows us that we need to invest and give into our networks before we get anything out of them. 
so all of these people tell us something very important about social media that it is about the caring and the giving so the question we need to ask is not will people use social media to overcome adversity we know they will the question is will you thank you